London's climate policy should and is already starting in Beijing. Every tonne of carbon counts, and we need an awful lot of them between now and 2020. Most estimates suggest something in the order of 15 to 20 gigawatts mitigated globally between now and 2020 if we want a sort of a 50% chance to stay somewhere below the two degrees before we all begin to fry. But the UK is a very small place. Total emissions right now is around half a gigaton, rising about 4% over the last year. If we even manage to mitigate, say, 20% between now and 2020, that means that we're contributing less than 1% to the overall amount that needs to be mitigated globally. One's got to put the little UK into perspective. Tons do count, and where are they going to come from? Actually, a lot of the tons that the UK is going to mitigate are going to come because of actions in China. We could try outsourcing our cuts just as we have outsourced our emissions. In other words, through um, the time-honoured process of the sale of absolutions, otherwise known as offsetting, where we pay another country to cut our emissions on our behalf because we don't want to do it because it's too expensive at home. And sure, the economic case looks fairly straightforward. You can make bigger cuts in China for a certain amount of money than you could make in Britain for the same amount of money. Well, that's fine. If the only cuts you're trying to make are 5 or 10% of your total emissions, then it's quite easy to offset. But as soon as you start climbing into the teens and then the tens of, of percent of your emissions, you run into a few barriers. Not least is a barrier of mathematics. I worked out, for instance, that if the developed world tried to cut 50% of its emissions through offsetting, it would require a cut of 125% in the developing world in order to do the offsetting. Now, it is true that at 2% of global emissions, it's not a huge amount of the total global pool. But of course, in terms of actual responsibility, per capita responsibility, that's far more than our fair share. China's emissions currently run from fossil fuels alone, this is at 5.3 tonnes per person per year, ours at 8.5. So for us to turn to China and say, you people should be clearing up your act, while we are doing so little that our emissions are actually rising, well, it's a bit like the Daily Mail's policy on nudity. It, um, on the left-hand side of its website, fulminates bitterly against the smut on TV, and the right-hand side of the column is entirely composed of young women bursting out of their bikinis. Actually, China's own plans to reduce its carbon emissions domestically in production means that over the next 10 years, it should well be that many of the imports that we continue to import from China will have dramatically less carbon in it. Hey, presto, China policy, carbon mitigation outcome in the UK. It isn't simply a question of China getting it right and us taking the advantage of it, we also need to have the right policies, but many of them are not really about climate per se, but are about economics. The question is not so much whether we can teach or influence China. That's actually a fairly absurd <coughs> idea. The question is more that China's own policies are going to drive carbon mitigation in the UK, as well as, of course, carbon mitigation in many other countries. The only thing we have left, if we were to assume that we have any influence over Beijing whatsoever, would be persuasion. And there are two kinds of persuasion. There's hypocritical persuasion of the kind that this government's quite good at practicing, that responsibility thing again, which is to say, do as we say, but not as we do. And there is persuasive persuasion to say, we are doing it, you can do it too. What has completely scuppered the climate talks, both at Copenhagen and at Cancun, has been this perfect circle of finger pointing where everybody is trying to unload the responsibility onto everybody else by saying, you're the ones who's got to make the cuts, we're not going to do it. And this carbon nationalism, which has completely jiggered any attempts to have a replacement for Kyoto, let alone an agreement which brings in all the nations of the world. It's not until somebody breaks that perfect circle of finger pointing by saying, OK, we accept the pressing need for overall cuts in our greenhouse gas emissions, and we are going to demonstrate our acceptance of that by making major real cuts of our own. That's the only thing which is going to break that logjam at the international climate talks and encourage other countries to do the same. What we're talking about here is leadership and responsibility, two things which are manifestly lacking when it comes to climate change policy in the UK or indeed in most of the developing world. And what that requires, ladies and gentlemen, is that London's policy on climate change begins and ends in London. Thank you very much.